One of the darkest chapters in Maine's history unfolded over a period of decades. It touched thousands of lives. It's the story of how the government forcibly removed children from Native American families and placed them with white families. That practice happened here and in other states. A few years ago, Maine set up a Truth and Reconciliation Commission to investigate what happened and to allow people to bear witness, all of which is the subject of a documentary film called Dawnland. I never would have thought that the state of Maine would ever engage with the Wabanaki on this level. We see it as something very deep, unnecessary transition from being an occupier to being a neighbor. Ben Pender Cudlip is one of the co-directors of Dawn Land, and we started our conversation by asking when the forced removal of Native American children from their families began. I mean, you really need to go back to the founding of this country and first contact with Europeans. Um, Europeans came over and found uh, Native people, they found them inferior. And so those attitudes were uh, resulted in outright murder and enslavement. Um, in the late 18, early 1900s, Native children were taken to boarding schools where their hair was cut, they were beaten if they spoke their language. This was to, to civilize them, to kill the Indian, to save the man. Um, when the child welfare system developed in the 40s, those attitudes filtered into the system. Um, and so you have largely non-Native social workers uh, looking at a culture that isn't their own and finding it inferior. And what, pe what people will find striking is that this is not something that just occurred even as late as the 40s. This ha was happening as recently as the 1970s in Maine? Oh, sure. I mean, uh, in the 1970s, there was a congressional study that found nationwide between one-third and one-quarter of all Native children at that time were living outside of their homes in foster care, adoptive homes, or boarding schools. One quarter of yes. all Native American children. And so you can imagine what that does to communities losing their children. Now, let's bring the story forward to uh, just recent years. In 2013, a, group, uh, a, a panel was set up, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Maine was the first state ever to set up a panel like this, which was to look at what happened and how reconciliation could be started to be brought about. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, and I'd say possibly even more important than reconciliation is healing. The trauma that's been done to these communities, to the Native and the Wabanaki communities in Maine, is intergen intergenerational, it's long-lasting. Um, and so one of the commission's highest purposes was trying to figure out how, through this process of truth-telling, they could bring about healing in these communities. And this is what your film, Dawnland, really zeroes in on, correct? Is the Truth and Re Reconciliation Commission the stories that were told, the people who were affected, and what their hopes and aspirations are in terms of healing and a better future for all of Maine, right? That's right, yeah. So our film goes in, uh, behind the scenes of the truth and reconciliations process and witnesses the, the resilience and the strength of the Wabanaki, the Mi'kmaq, Maliseet, Passamaquoddy, and Penobscot people that came forward to share their stories. Um, and the film, our, our hope with the film is to lift up this process that, uh, that happened in Maine and show it as a model for other states and other places around the world so that they can embark in their own types of restorative justice practices, however they may fit those communities. When you hear the stories that people tell and you see how raw the wounds still are, it's heartbreaking. Was it hard to tell the story because this, these, these wounds are still so raw? Yes, but it's, it's not about me, it's not about us, the film team. Really, our, our highest purpose was to try and do justice to these stories, to, to try to authentically lift them up and share them um, in a way that was honest, in a way that was respectful, and I, I hope that we've done that in the film. You actually, during the making of the film, while you were just partway through, you, you showed parts of it to uh, Mi'kmaq, Maliseet, Penobscot, Passamaquoddy representatives and said to them, what do you think? Are we telling the story in the right way? Are we telling the story accurately, didn't you? That's correct. My co-director and I are non-native. Um, we're not from tribal communities in Maine. Um, and so it was really important to us to not be those guys, the, the white filmmakers that come in and say, trust us, we're here to tell your stories, we're here to do good. And so partway through the editing process, we brought a rough cut of the film to the people that were in the film, uh, Maine Wabanaki Reach, the commissioners, and so forth. And it was, it was made very clear to us the things, that, uh, the things that we could do a lot better, 
So we, we took that feedback, we internalized it, and we came back with a film that we're really proud of and that we hope can really do some good. Dawnland is going to air on public television nationwide on Monday night. That's November 5th. On November 16th at the University of Southern Maine, there will be a free screening of the concert with Wabanaki Music. You can find more information on our website and our mobile app, and we will be right back.